And we're back. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Monica in studio today. The most legendary mustache I've ever seen. What is going on there? So, <laughs> it's actually been a minute. So, I, I did the math on this the other day. You got to talk a little closer. My bad. It's all good. So, I, I did the math on this the other day. And um, I've had this since 2016, I think. Bro, that's a long yeah. ass time. Yeah, it's become a character trait. It takes me like a week to grow this. <laughs> <laughs> it's still fresh. I don't, I don't have that. But yeah, bro. Yeah, so. I had, so I had to like, I had my hair long for a minute when I was doing, I, I lived on like a, a research vessel when I studied abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is like. <laughs> so I did like a, a, a cool abroad program, which we can get into. But before, when I was on that boat, I had like, the shag hair and uh-huh. like the full like beard going on. And then I got back and shaved the hair and like, I felt like a part of me, like I never gave it a good chance because yeah. like it was, I say it's to here, but like it, my hair gets curly when it gets long. Uh-huh. So it didn't even look that long. Do you have any pics? You got to send me some of those. Yeah. After. I'll, send you some yeah of those. I'll, I'll, I'll embed that in here. <laughs> <laughs> I have a oh, funny yeah. one actually I'll send you, but so long story short, I was like, I'm gonna rock the mustache. So I did it for one November, and then <laughs> just stuck. I never, I never shaved it. But you haven't touched it. I never shaved it. That was 2000. Seriously, no lie, my junior year of college. Damn, that's a yeah. minute. It's been a while. Can you curl it? Yeah. <laughs> Easy beans. I mean, I, I gotta do some manscaping. You know, oh I trim my it God, up and, you're crazy, and I get bro. it. But you're crazy. Actually, it's pretty long right now. But yeah, so so Nick yeah. brought a. Some some gifts to the podcast today. A little gem. Some some narwhal <laughs> coffee. Some liquid gold. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm drinking a cup right now of not narwhal coffee. So yeah, I I, I'm not gonna mention the machine that that <laughs> coffee came out of <laughs> on this podcast. Yeah, but. man. So shit. What like what's the premise of of narwhal? How did how did that come to be? Just a little background too. I knew Nick in college. Yeah. We weren't like really close. I don't like, I don't even know if we really were black like, sheep. Yeah. For anyone that knows. <laughs> they don't know what that <laughs> one anyone. means. They don't know what that one means. But, but uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I would say we were just, I was going to say cordial, but that, that makes it sound like we weren't. I'd like, say acquaintances. Yeah. Acquaintances. In the best way possible. Yeah. I feel like, um, as we, I don't want to say like got older, but mm-hmm. it sounds so cliche, but as we did grow, I feel like we became closer just simply by the fact that there's a, there's a certain respect that you gain for someone when you see someone grinding and you see someone yeah. passionate about something. 100%. And so I was extremely pumped up when I saw the podcast thing, because like I was telling you, I've been thinking about doing like a podcast for so long, but I just never pulled the trigger. Mm-hmm. So, um, and part of that is because of Narwhal, right? So like, the hardest thing for me with narwhal was I was very fearful. Like I'm very fearful. Right. And like, it wasn't natural for me to just like jump into this and be a risk taker. I have been an entrepreneur and I've had that spirit my whole life, but it's a whole different level when, you know, like you can watch as many podcasts as you want. You can, you can do whatever it takes to get you to that point of jumping. Definitely. And then once you jump, it's all like great and dandy until you're swiping your fucking credit card. (laughs) Right. Like, you know, yeah, no, like, that's, sure. like it's like, oh, 500 pop, 50 yeah, pop, 25 like, pop. Like you get the artwork, thousand dollar like, pop. And you're like, you're like, oh, it's cool. Like people are loving it. And then you start like, and then you're really th- going after you like, oh, fuck. it really like, comes down to when you pull out the wallet yeah, and like, these cameras I swear, are 300 like, a piece. <laughs> like, shit. And no one talks about that. Nah. I mean, people talk about how like getting money is hard or getting money is easy and this, that and the other. But no one really talks about like that feeling when it's like. Oh, okay. This sucks. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, bro. Like for I'm real. Gonna swipe this again, and I don't know when the money's coming exactly. back. Exactly. Like, just you like, know? like on my end, from some of that too. It's like even. I mean, obviously, starting a podcast, people are gonna be like, "What the fuck's he doing?" Yeah. And then like last night, I got this crazy text from this dude. Like, I don't even. He's just like, <laughs> like barstool podcasts are dead. Like you're trying to be Joe Rogan. Stop trying to do that. Yeah. I'm right. Like, bro, like, yeah, it's it's it's, it's not even episode. like that. Yeah, like, it's like just just relax. But, but yeah, that's so, it. I mean that's the thing. People just want to compare you. Yeah, I mean which is fine. Like I am kind of doing the same shit, just with like a you know like. But but I don't know where it's gonna go from there. But why compare is the whole yeah, point. I think. Yeah. Right. No. Like, exactly. What's it's just nasty. No, it's a nasty culture. There's really no reason for yeah, it. It's there's not. Yeah. But anyways, back to the yeah, topic. Yeah. So 
so narwhal is actually like um this kind of dawned on me yesterday i was really frustrated but it's been in the works for a minute mm -hmm. um i had a i had an instagram called california narwhal mm -hmm. with no g on the front and it was, I probably shouldn't even Nar put. Narwhal, Narwhal spelled G-N-A-R-W-H-A-L. Yeah. Like gnarly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got you there. Don't Thank worry. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I probably shouldn't even plug California Narwhal because there's some embarrassing photos on there. But it was basically like, I was, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't even know the login. So it was run by my manager. <laughs> but, uh. But yeah, so I was just posting like basically artistic photos and just like dumb stuff or whatever. And I just liked Narwhal, right? It's like the unicorn of the sea. I just thought it was like, mm -hmm. this could be a brand in itself. And then... Um, when was this? Like how long ago was this? This was literally 2015. Yeah, so a while ago. So it's been a while. And um, so Tyler Goss, one of my best friends is, you know, Tyler. Yeah, of course. Um, so Tyler and I like have always... Tyler's another real entrepreneurial dude and all of our ideas have been together. Right. So like we've been bouncing shit off of each other for so mm -hmm. long, like literally so long. You need somebody like that. In your you life do hundred percent. And, and like Tyler and I used to DJ together. That was kind of like our first thing. Right. Um, and, and so like, we've kind of always been on the same wavelength and then like, I'm, I'm just obsessed with food and breakfast. And, and so things started to happen. And then basically on a drive home from big Sur with Dakota, my girlfriend, we were, we were just like kind of high on life. Like it, it sounds weird. Cause we had just gotten evacuated from big Sur for the fires up there. <laughs> and this is like 2016, like that summer. And we were both going abroad to different places, but we were just feeling it. We're like, we're together. We're driving down PCH, like uh -huh. whatever. And then, um, it's a little closer to the mic. My bad. Oh yeah. No, it's all good. <laughs> um, I told you I'm going to pull it next time. <laughs> but so, uh, so yeah, but we were driving back and then, I don't, I can't even remember if it was me or her, but someone was just like, narwhals are kind of gnarly. And then like, we, we kind of had that moment, right? Where we're like, oh shit, gnarly <laughs> narwhal, right? And then that's when we just like added the G yeah. and then we had this whole thing where we're like, this is going to be a clothing brand. Like we're going to, this is going to be so dope. And this was like, I can't remember what the swimsuits were. I, I really can't remember what the company is, but like it was a girl from Thousand Oaks that was killing it. Like our age, mm -hmm. like super young had this su really successful like bikini line and we're like, damn, like narwhal is it. Right. But then like we thought about it and we're like, we don't want to be like those kids from LA that start like a clothing brand. Right. Like it's so oversaturated. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, we just weren't really that about it. And so over the course of like the next literally three years, um, this thing came together. So, and so how to become a coffee company from the, from the clothing <laughs> company. <laughs> Yeah, uh, to check you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I told you I was, I'm like, I've always been obsessed from bre with breakfast. Like since I was a little kid, like I would legit wake up, like go to the table and like, I was ready for breakfast. Like mm -hmm. that was my thing. And, um, shout out my parents. Cause like big they, shout uh, out. they always have big shout out. They always had breakfast ready. Like that was my thing. <laughs> and, um, even in high school, bro, because I commuted from Simi Valley to Sherman Oaks every day. That's a push. Yeah. It was a push. Yeah. And, um, my, dude, my pops would always have two eggs over medium, couple slices of toast, like half an avocado, whatever it was. Tradition. Tradition. And, um, which is also my favorite breakfast, by the way, key to my heart. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw some bacon in there too, if I'm feeling crazy. Oh, but, man. Um, so yeah, the obsession with breakfast. And then one day I was actually, um, I, I kind of wanted to do like cold brew and, uh, I was interviewing for the job that I'm currently at my day job and I was on the plane flight from Houston to LA back home. I had a really good interview. I was feeling good. And then I was sitting next to this couple and they were just like smiling, like perma smile. Mm -hmm. And I just started talking to them and they were this, it was the, um, the husband, Jose this is from Nicaragua. And then the wife, Sylvia is from Mexico. And so I'm talking to them. They're on this trip back from Mex or from, uh, Nicaragua. Yeah from Nueva Segovia. And I'm like, this is just this great conversation. They have a coffee farm out there. And I'm just like, what? Like, this is insane. Like, yeah. I've just been looking into coffee, blah, blah, blah. They're like, we live in Somar. Where are you at? And I'm like, I'm, my parents live in, in Simi. I'm in San Diego right now. Mm -hmm. About to graduate, yada, yada. But 
I knew if I got this job I had interviewed for, I was going to be going to China for two and a half months. Not yeah. a bad deal though. Not a bad <laughs> deal. But I, I also didn't want to let the opportunity slip. Right. Cause that doesn't come along like that. Like when you meet people on an airplane and they have a significant role, like t I'm just telling the people right now, you take those people up on the, you, that's synchronicity. Yeah, that, like this might sound a little corny, but that's some sort of like, like you said, synchronicity, like kind of like this, like something, 100%. man. Like, cause you, you were probably like looking for something like that. I was like, just be inspired by even just ins inspiration. Yeah. Because the crazy thing is, is I haven't even bought their coffee yet. That's the craziest yeah. thing. You know, it's like inspiration. You're, you're spot on with that because, um, I got back from, from China and I, I did, I took them up, I hit them up. And my next place I was living was Minneapolis for a couple months. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm coming home for, this was like, wait, why Minneapolis? I'll, 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 I'll tell you about the program. Yeah. Yeah. In a sec. But so I was going to be in Minneapolis for another two and a half months. I told them I'm coming home for Easter. Like, do you guys have any time? And they're like, just in typical, like open arms fashion, like absolutely. And like, I should mention that the Reyes family is like he, Jose Reyes and his wife, like Sylvia, they built a sick electrical company, like commercial electrical. And like, they made it like they're mm -hmm. full on extremely successful, blue collar, hardworking people, just good people. And so I'm like, I'm taking them up on this. So I took my parents. We went over to their place in Silmar. They roasted coffee for us fresh it's on like amazing. this. Dude, it was unreal. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the vibe. Like th yeah. I want to do this. So then basically from, from that point on is like when I started going hard, like I started like experimenting with, I would literally get Tupperwares, fill them with coffee to make these cold brews. I really uh -huh. wanted to do this horchata cold brew. I'm like, I'm going to make this happen. Like, I'm going to figure it out. And then I just like came, became mad scientist for the rest and of you, the, and you did that, right? You got yeah. the horchata cold brew out. Yeah. I finally, I finally <laughs> figured it out, which I, is honestly causing a lot of headaches right now. Cause we're using oh, real cinnamon. Ooh. So it's like blocking up the bottling machine. Uh -huh. So I have to change over to like a cinnamon flavor, but I'm about the health and wellness scene. So I'm like, what, what is the cinnamon flavor? Right. So it's just taking me so long to like find, vet a source. Is it organic? What is it that's added to it? Why do they call it a natural flavor? You know, like I'm Bro, in this warm. It must be so much work. So much work. I also just got approved by like today, literally today. The California Recycling Center, whatever you know, like uh -huh. a little CRV message. Uh -huh. I just got approved. Oh, whatever so you, that so means. That. Basically, that means I get to pay them five cents a bottle <laughs> from here on out. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's there be yeah. there must be so much like behind the scenes stuff that like you didn't even think about. When Dude, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even. It's be so much shit that you're just like, oh wow, this this came up like. <laughs> Like that, on was of of else. that was one of them. Everything else. That was one of them. I thought you just one. put the little message on there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yo, recycle this. Like, I'm about it. Like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Recycling board's going to get their five cents, dog. God damn, bro. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was like, uh, that was an R wall. Damn. Pretty much. In That's a amazing. Nutshell. So, you yeah. do cold brew and, and the beans, right? Yeah, yeah. So, the cold brew's not technically available yet. <laughs> I like that plug. <laughs> <laughs> the cold brew is not it's not really anywhere yet. Um, so I'm working with some retailers trying to get in. Can't really mention anything right now cause nothing's in concrete. Yeah. Um, definitely. we are doing a pop-up on June 15th. Really? 12 to Where? 4. Um, it's going to be at traveler surf club in Malibu. June 15th, June 15th, 12 to 4. Yeah. 12 traveler to 4. Surf right club. in front of first point. Cause you just did this event, which I went to that was yeah. like, I told you, I told you like it really inspired me because Thank like, you. because you just hit me up about the podcast when I posted that thing. You're yeah. like, yo bro, this is dope. Like come yeah, to yeah. my coffee event on like whenever 12 yeah. to three. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't even know you had a coffee. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's lit. Like, and then I went there, I was like, Oh wow. Like <laughs> this is really all him. Like yeah, this is yeah. all your merch there. Like, yeah. and your girls there helping out. <laughs> like that, that shit was Swiping amazing. Cards, Swiping collecting cards. Collecting money. Yeah. She held collecting it down. the checks. Shout out Dakota. Yeah. Big yeah. shout out to Dakota. <laughs> but nah, man. So that was super inspiring for Thank me you. to see just someone like chasing something, you know? Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah so that was, that was great. Another one coming. Uh, June yeah. 15th. Yeah. June 15th and this one will be cool too because like um the first one we were just kind of putting the feelers out there um but this one we, you can actually purchase the cold brew so i'll have six packs there mm -hmm. of each flavor um i'll have my my small batch of roasted coffee and uh merch Hell again yes. actually i want to shout out to sandpiper stoneware in san diego baron actually baron hilton hooked me up with him <laughs> oh, yeah man. yeah he linked me up with his buddy dane 
And um, so Dane and his his roommate Eric, they're good friends. They started this. Um, they do like handmade ceramics. Mm -hmm. So I started. Uh, Baron like linked us up. Dane came over to my place in Santa Monica. Had, dude, just so much skill. Like the their their handmade pottery is just insane. Really? Yeah, so good. And like, it's crazy too because he showed me this mug. And I've been talking about getting a mug with like where it's a big mug, but the top is a little bit more closed in than the bottom mm -hmm. so that it kind of traps the heat a little bit. Right. And like he just pulls this thing out not knowing it. And it's got that and shape. And it's exactly that what you wanted. Like, oh, man. That, are you that kidding? Synchronization. What, what you call Synchronicity. It? Synchronicity. Yeah. I love that word. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking that word. You should. <laughs> Take that to the bank. You should read a book called uh, The Celestine Prophecy. Who wrote that? It's, um wow. I should probably know who wrote it. <laughs> But I honestly don't even know. But I hate fiction. Like, I legit do not. Really? I don't like fiction. It's just my, it's not my thing. Like, I like nonfiction. I like biographies. I like to learn shit that, like, I just like, like, history. And yeah. I just like learning about people, what makes them tick. So fiction has never really been my thing. I respect it. But, um, but The Celestine Prophecy is probably my favorite book I've ever read maybe like top five, mm -hmm. which is embarrassing that I don't even know who wrote it to be honest with you. It was a New York times bestseller, but it's a fiction book. Um, but it just talks all about synchronicities and recognizing coincidences as more than a coincidence. Yeah. And right? like, that's a decision that you make hundred percent. That's like, that's how I look at things for sure. It's the healthiest way to live in my yeah. opinion. No, definitely. You know, no matter what you believe in. Definitely. I agree, bro. So, so like switching gears a little bit, mm -hmm. like, so traveling for you, you mentioned you were on a, on a cruiser, cruise ship. Cruise? No, no, no cruise know, ships. Something sailboat. small, small sailboat, sailboat. The exact opposite yeah. of a cruise ship. Yeah. yeah. Not, <laughs> not a cruise ship. Sailboat no in, semester in New Zealand. Yes. You lived in China. Damn, you've been all over. Man. <laughs> Shit. So that, that's also probably a, huge player in the uh in the coffee game too has been the travels but your experiences yeah 100 yeah. percent um so i a lot of people don't know this but i originally went to usd to play football i don't oh, even know I if you knew that no fucking yeah <laughs> yeah so i was like you do not seem like the type that's crazy. <laughs> you know what's hilarious you'd probably ask like 95 percent of the people from my high school like what uh -huh. is nick's type or whatever and they'd be probably football. be like football jock Damn, like, that's yeah that's crazy i know and it's not like I tried to do it. You, you look changed. like a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> That's the racist, boy with bro. The <laughs> Blonde hair, blue eyed, white hey. kid. <laughs> Goldie. Goldie no, nah, I'm not smart enough for that shit. That'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, no, um, I played well in high school. So your boy used to weigh like 210. You were a tank. Yeah, I was a tank. Like 210, <laughs> 215. And I would literally weigh like 180 now. Um, but so I played tight end and outside backer in high school. Oh, yeah. you were a tank. Yeah, <laughs> legit. Yeah, I actually played like defensive end most of most of my junior senior year. Damn. Yeah. Man. So yeah. you went to USD to play football then. So I went to USD to play football. Um, I broke my elbow freshman year, like first semester, and I was already kind of like gray shirt freshman, like mm -hmm. who is this guy sort of thing. Break yeah. the elbow. Um, and I honestly just wanted to surf. Like, I just, like, that's all I really wanted to do. So heal up from this elbow injury, come back, and I just wasn't feeling it, dude. Like, I actually had, like, the best spring of my life. Like, I was mm -hmm. balling. Like, it, I, I was balling out. It was, like, the best spring of my entire life, like, legit. Yeah. And then um, the summer, freshman year, going into sophomore year, um, my girlfriend's dad is a chef. Dakota's dad's a chef. And he sick in the kitchen sick in the kitchen what's he chefing up dude like so what well, have you heard of territory foods by any chance mm -mm. so I'll plug him too man <laughs> hey. chef dean khan on territoryfoods.com <laughs> <laughs> um no he he does like pre-packaged paleo meals now oh yeah i'm with that yeah no they're and they're telling him my line fire. i will <laughs> i will um so it's a, he works he's like a feature chef with a company called territory foods and yeah, they do like prepackaged paleo meals for, they actually started out with just like CrossFit gyms and now they've like, mm -hmm. that it's was a good place to start though. Great place to start. Yeah. And that was the whole thing is like providing an easy way to pick up meals for the week for like busy people yeah. that were paleo lifting hard, needed high protein, low carb. Exactly. You gotta have sugar. a niche to start for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, he was actually, 
he was on the crew for Survi- Survivor. Yeah, he was the chef for the crew of Survivor. So he was Sick. based down in, in uh, Nicaragua. And so Why can't you say that? Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a kook, like saying it like regular, but I also kind of feel like a poser saying it with that accent. So you'll see me toggle between the two. <laughs> in fact, I think earlier I was like Nicaragua. <laughs> right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> gotta find a happy medium yeah anyways my bad no it's all good um so basically he was down there and he was like all right um so dakota's mom and dakota and her brother were like we're gonna go down for two weeks visit him while he's on like his little hiatus mm-hmm. and i'm like surf nicaragua or report early to football camp like you know and to be honest, like <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be more of a juggle if I was like feeling football, but in yeah, my mind, no I was brainer, like, yeah, man. I was like, that's no, no way. I'm not going to the league. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I, uh, I went on this and you know, what's funny. I took it serious. Like my football workouts, like I was lifting rocks. I like, bet you did. Bro. I was doing push ups, Like I was doing bench dips on like staircases oh and every day like running like i was doing the whole nine but the point was my mind was just somewhere else and right. so after that I came back finished out the season and then sophomore year spring i was just like I'm, I'm done with this yeah um and then that was why the first semester junior year i did i applied for this program i studied environmental science so i knew i could i didn't i just didn't want to go to europe and drink not that i have anything against that i think that <sighs> I don't have anything you're against preaching, it. But yeah. You're preaching to me, yeah. And it's cool. Like I, I think like that that's really like it's a really fun bonding experience like with your friends, but for me like it was like I had been fortunate enough to go to Europe when I was younger. Yeah. My brother was stationed uh there when he was in the Marine Corps and he was in Austria and Germany, so mm-hmm. when I was really young I got to go and then like um we went on a Europe trip when I was also like 12, 13. Yeah. So I kind of had that vibe, but I was like I want to do something that I can't I won't have a chance to do again. So I applied for this um, semester. It was called SEA, C Education Association, Mm -hmm. SEA semester. And um, it was epic. I spent like, I don't even know, two two weeks. No, no, probably about a full month in Woods Hole, Massachusetts on the Cape. Which you should go to the Cape. I've never been. It's dope. It's a good spot. I got to check it out. Yeah. Like fall, summer. It's a great spot. Um, so we spent like a month out there, like on land, you're really just like, um, you're kind of learning the lay of the sailboats. Mm-hmm. They're, they're big sailboats they are 135 foot, like yeah. oh, badass shit. looking, like, <laughs> you know, pirate yeah. ship looking thing. Um, and so you learn kind of like the lay of the ship and then you start your research and your classes and you, you meet your, obviously like your Got classmates it. and your crewmates and the whole nine. And Damn. then we, we flew out to, uh to New Zealand, to Auckland. Yeah, I got on oh, in Auckland. How was Auckland? I want to go so bad. Auckland was sick, dude. Oh, bad. It was It was really cool. You know, it was crazy. It was a lot more multicultural than I had originally anticipated. I've heard, I've heard there's like a lot of Nigerians there too. So I can't really speak necessarily to that because uh-huh. my experience was, I, I noticed there was a lot of Indians and a lot of Chinese. Damn. Yeah, which I thought was just like, I it totally, like I was kind of mind blown mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Um, so... I thought it was going to be like a little mini Australia, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, which yeah. it kind of is, yeah. but like, that was just a pleasant surprise. And actually like I had four buddies studying abroad in New Zealand. Oh, so, so I got money. there yeah, like a week that's, early that's good money. and they had, they knew like Auckland or whatever. And uh-huh. we just like, we kind of tore it up for a week and then I got on the boat. It was, it was sweet. <laughs> you got that week of drinking. Yeah, I, got the, <laughs> I got the week off my back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, dude, the craziest thing too, when I was flying back, I had no one sitting next to me on my seat. That's never happened to me. Never. Yeah, that shit has never like happened to me. 13 hour, 14 hour flight or whatever it was. God damn, that's Feet nice up, though. Like bro. two oh. empty seats. You like were, I had Oh, you had two Oh, so you had a bed. I had a bed. <laughs> <laughs> you had a fucking bed. But yeah, yeah, just just speaking to that, like yeah. not not going to Europe and drinking type thing. Like yeah. that was like last last spring break for me. It was like me and two homies were like, we're so done with Cabo. Like, 100%. like I can't go to Cabo again. So yeah. we like we took ten days and went to Japan. Mm. It was the best experience of my life. Where'd you go? Like, Tokyo and Kyoto and Nara. <sighs> the deer are out, bro. Those deer are different. Like Damn. they're just following you around. Yeah, just feeding them and shit. Like, That's was, epic. Yeah. So it was like, food. It was a cold. <laughs> <laughs> what, bro? They had this like. That's always where my mind goes. Yeah, of course. Udon, bro. 
we were at this place in Nara, and this chef is like rolling the dough right in front of us, cutting the noodle. Like I can't even have udon anymore. Yeah, like, bet. Just, although there's one place here, Marugame Udon. Ooh, big shout out! Big they, shout yeah, out! Alert! You gotta check that out. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, bro, like just that experience. Like that's the shit that you'll. I mean, I love. I did Cabo a few times. Yeah, but yeah. It's like after a while, again, it's nothing like, wrong. Yeah, nothing no. wrong with that. But after a while, it's like, what experiences am I gonna have that are gonna like shape me moving forward? Yeah, you know, because just traveling like that is such a culture shock, and like let you see how other people live, which is yeah, you know, how other people important. live, and I, dude, for some reason, and I'll always go back to this, but how other people eat is so <sighs> interesting to me. Yeah, it's because like at the end of the day, the experience is the same. Mm-hmm. right like it's always like you're sitting down for a meal mm-hmm. like you can't change that but like the tradition exactly. the cuisine like that to me is like my favorite part about traveling me too man oh, like sitting like, down at a table and like eating at like some hole in the wall street food spot in oh, the yeah. middle of yunnan china mm-hmm. and you're just like what am i eating yeah, like, how is where china am- bro what kind of is it like chinese food here or is it <laughs> We do a disservice calling a lot of things Chinese. Food. Really? Yeah. I mean, so you I again, China. like you said, you found your spot like for the Japanese udon, mm-hmm. but like you, you can find your some good Chinese food here. But the point is like, oh, it's just all, it's on <laughs> another level, bro. It's on another level. I oh, ate a bro. lot of carbs in China. Oh, I'm not a big carb. To, oh my God. To. Every day. Especially when you're traveling. Much. Yeah. It was sure, done. Bro. Well, and you're also walking so much like their public transportation. I was in Shanghai specifically mm-hmm. for most of the time. And their public transportation was next level. So I was walking everywhere. Yeah. So I was actually like living at, in what it felt to me like a more healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Definitely. Air quality wasn't as bad as people say. Really? I've heard it was, gnarly. there was bad days. There was bad days, but for the most part, like it, it wasn't nearly as bad as there are some cities that are worse than Shanghai for mm-hmm. sure. Like Beijing is, is a lot worse, but uh, it wasn't as bad as I had originally anticipated. But yeah. dude, I had like fresh fruit every morning from like a little fruit stand on my way into the office. Did you go out there alone? I was alone. Yeah. How was yeah. that? How was that? Like that's, that's, that's heavy yeah, to be honest. Sure. Like, and I, I had narwhal on my mind. Right. right. So like, I, I didn't know what I was doing with it yet. Really. I would say at that point, mm-hmm. but it was on my mind. So it's like, yeah. I, I don't speak the language. I don't, I, you can't, it's not like Spanish. You can like sound things out right. or Italian or something like that. And you can kind of read it completely and like, different. You just, yeah. there's nothing you can do. So you like learn your little things to live, but, um, you're just in your head, dude, which was probably one of the greatest things for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I like imagine, I get yeah. a little bit emotional, like even thinking about it. Cause I'm like, sure, bro. And like there's yeah. some times on the subway where you're just like, whoa, like, you know, <laughs> in like, like a good way or a bad way in a good way, a great yeah. way. But it's yeah. just like, damn, you know, yeah. I, I mean, also being in a communist culture is Heavy. right. You yeah. know, yeah. like, and it, you see like the goods as well as the bads too, mm-hmm. right? Like there's some stuff where I was like, this is working here. Like, you know, in this, in this way or whatever. Yeah. But, um, that was also really important for my mindset and just, no, definitely. You and know. you're going to, that, that probably helped you to get to where you're at now. Honestly, hundred percent. for yeah, sure. at least in my life, like solo travel has been the single handed best thing to get 100%. to know myself, you know, cause you like, you get to do whatever the fuck want yeah like, <laughs> you're on no one's you're agenda. on no one's agenda especially yeah. like i didn't have like any like service or anything i only had like my phone when i was on wi-fi yeah because like, i did a month same throughout yeah, yeah. exactly and, like that's the best way to do it i feel like because you're really just 100 percent out there like, yeah you get to eat what you want to eat like go where you want to no go doubt. yeah it's so amazing yeah you know? and, like, or sometimes just not do anything just not do shit yeah <laughs> you know like some, yeah. sometimes i just go to a park on a saturday exactly and like everyone's like oh man were you out every weekend i'm like there was a couple weekends I stayed right in Shanghai. I went to my favorite noodle spot or exactly. dumpling spot and I got a fat plate of food and I went to the park and I just sat for like two hours. And that's how you really get to love yourself though. hundred like, percent. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for me at least like that's the best way. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I just love to, to get out there. And see Dude, that. It's yeah. It makes me want to travel right now, man. Me too. I me was and, actually like, what? Well, go ahead. Me and you know, you know, health, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. You know what do you yeah, mean? My yeah. roommate, yeah. everybody, <laughs> my roommate, we're playing a trip to Russia, Copenhagen right now. Dope. For yeah. Like September. Were you flying to Moscow or probably Copenhagen first? Copenhagen. And then, and then, but yeah, cause I don't know. Anything. Like I really don't know shit about that culture, Yeah. which is like why I want to. Yeah. Cause if that's like, that gives me so much coming back. You oh, know? so like, critical. Another yeah. communist culture. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, history there like so much yeah like 
eeriness. Be careful, bro. I don't know. Just, Always. I'm just playing. Always. I might get a tattoo out there. <laughs> you should. Sorry, mom. That'd be fly. <laughs> Actually, so I got a tattoo from a, a Russian artist. See? In Bali. They do good work. <laughs> <laughs> She's dope. She's dope. She might be in Moscow. Man. I'll link hey, Sasha. Yes, shout out Sasha. Yes, big shout out to Sasha. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so that's a, it's a big. But uh, it's funny, too. You mentioned the Cabo thing because I did the same thing my senior mm-hmm. year. Like my senior year, I actually never went to Cabo, which is the craziest part. But um, Tyler and I just weren't feeling it. Yeah. And I can't remember what Tyler had going on, but I basically like sent it up north with like a crew of people that are just incredible people. Mm -hmm. Like I I bonded with these um, with this group like so heavily, but I didn't really know them. I can call like they were all like acquaintances that I either had like a class with or like knew one person like really well, maybe like kind of knew the other four yeah. people. And I had just like ended up being the best spring break I could have ever asked for. I bet, man. Like, like the best. As long as they're good people, for sure. Great people. Like. Yeah. And like just going into it and just like letting your guard down and just. Yeah, because you don't know them that well. You don't so know. It's like them. you're a little uncomfortable, but like, but you just, just get gotta in do there it. and yeah. you just, if, if you can just like, and I'm, that's the type of person I am. So mm-hmm. I will say that I'm type A. Like, but I just went in there with just like a open mind, like, didn't know these people like at all, really. And just was the greatest spring break. And a lot of that I spent alone too, because I had to ditch them early. Mm-hmm. And I met up with Tyler in the desert, but I drove from the tip <laughs> of of uh northern california on the yeah. east side down the whole 395 alone that's a push man along with dope. your thoughts and your visions for yeah that long. and my film camera and dude this is the saddest part bro talk about synchronicities <laughs> i had i had a whole roll of film that i shot on that trip uh-huh. 35 or whatever 34 32 shots and i only wanted to shoot one roll and i spilled a water on the on the no. on the roll of film and when i developed it it just wasn't it looked like tie-dye photos that hurts bro it hurt. <laughs> like it and you know what's crazy i'll never forget the photos i took that i like remember i wrote a story about one of the guys i took a photo of he was a hitchhiker he was heading the opposite way of me but i had to take a photo of this guy and i told him uh-huh. i'm like i'm heading the wrong way otherwise i'd pick you up but like i gotta take a picture of you yeah and this dude's name was randy and I ended up talking to him. He was trying to head up to Reno. I was going south. Oh, Randy. <laughs> Randy's going to Reno? Yeah, I don't know what was Randy was, <laughs> was up to. <laughs> and the whole story is taking Randy to Reno. Like, Man. what would have happened if I was you heading north? You should have just said, fuck it. Fuck it. Head <laughs> right back. But anyways, <laughs> that's my tangent for you about yeah. my, my spring break. So I resonate with that. So that's another big passion of yours, though, like, right? Like photography. and Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that was more like a product of, of, um, traveling. Yeah. Like, you know, wanting to be like proficient at documenting my experiences. Mm -hmm. So I just like, like in, in high school, I took like more like conventional art, but then in college I took like some real photography classes and started developing my own film like at USD. And so how do you balance that? Like, cause for me, I always struggle with this when I'm traveling, like I want to be in the moment. But also I want to like have some, some memories, you mm-hmm. know? And like, sometimes I feel like I'm like, ah, oh, like I'm on my camera too much. Like I just need to be here and like take in the, like everything, you know? So how, like, no, I hear you. What's your balance with that? Or are you just kind of like, fuck it. Like, I'm gonna take it's it. tough. I, pr- I don't really take a lot of photos. Got it. Believe it or not. Um, the film camera helped, mm-hmm. but it just sounds so like cliche. Like I'm just, you know, like <laughs> I promise I'm not another disposable camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, why did that make such a comeback i don't know it's kind of like, weird out of nowhere. I'm, I'm hating but i had him at my my launch party <laughs> <laughs> of course you did no but the 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 dis- or the um the film camera helped me mm-hmm. on that i think that's why i got so passionate about it because like you're not just taking film shots right you know like every time you take a film photo you mean something you're thinking about yeah, it you know you're, you're a little bit more in tune and in fact i think you actually remember those moments even more Cause you're so in tune to it, you know, True. whereas like the digital, you just snap, <laughs> snap you know, snap, snap. so I think that's one way. And then the other way is just like, I, I get obsessed. Like, dude, I've been thinking about this podcast for a week. My God. Weeks, like, <laughs> and like wanting to get into you this moment. Cause I get obsessed with this. Like, yeah. That's just kind of the person I am. So that works for me. Right. Like if I'm like sitting down and I'm having Udon in Japan, 
like I'm going to be so plugged into that moment watching the chef, like everything Man, going around. So I'll rare. forget to take a photo. In this day and age, that shit is so rare. And then I kick myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. for, for sure. That's a beautiful thing, though, that you're so passionate. Like, because I feel like that's a, a loss on a lot of people these days, to be honest. Or maybe they just haven't found that thing that gets them going. But I think, yeah, I don't, not to get too philosophical, but I, I really feel like people are just, um, I don't know about people. I don't want to make like an overarching mm-hmm. statement, but I think that a lot of people are just spending too much time looking and not enough time experiencing so i love that you know yeah like just simple plain and simple like i think like a lot of people are just like if you just stopped for a second like take like a job for example like if you're sitting in your office and you hate your job Mm -hmm. how many people are actually like sitting at their job and experiencing their job for eight hours a day nobody nobody right (laughs) yeah like i'm sure like if you sat there and you like you just tuned in for eight hours and you actually did that Mm -hmm. if you already didn't like your job you're gonna hate your job (laughs) right like you spend eight hours tuned into something you hate you're gonna be like there's no choice but for me to get out of here yeah or maybe like you'll open up an excel sheet and then you'll find a way to cut a thousand dollars in costs and you're in the accounting department and now you're like oh that was kind of fun no and then you open the next one and then like maybe you uncovered something that you really like Right. And now you go to your boss and you say, I'm really good at this because I like it. Can mm-hmm. I do more of this? Right. Your boss isn't going to be like, no. And if he does, then you again, no, I need to shake out of here. Yeah. So I'm like, out. I think that that's a big thing with like the passion is like people aren't taking enough time to just, to just experience something for a second. No, a hundred percent. And even I kind of feel like that. I felt like that for a while. It's like at my day job, like I was literally just going to work working out and then like just kind of fucking off at night watching yeah. TV or something. And like every, I mean, I've been doing this for like three weeks, but, <laughs> <laughs> but since I started this bro, like my productivity at work's been so much better. Like, because I, I work like I'm tuned in for it. Not, maybe not eight, like tuned in, really tuned in for like six and a half. Yeah. Seven that's hours. Real, yeah let's let's be real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stuff. yeah. But tuned in for like, and I'm really there now, you know, cause yeah. I know after work, I'm like, Oh, I get You're to out. go, I get to go work on something. I'm, yeah. like, I really am passionate about and really, really want to do. You know, and so for me, that that gives me so much energy and just like how crazy productive are you on your podcast after work? Literally, (laughs) like I just work, work out for 45 minutes and then I go and just cut like, yeah, just cut the clips up, like edit the audio literally to like 11, 12. But yeah, but it's just like it's just something I love to do. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, the thing. it's like I really love to do it. Well, that means you're finding your lane. Yeah, Like, like I don't know where this is gonna go. That's the whole thing. It doesn't matter. But I'm trying to, I'm trying it doesn't to figure matter. it out. Yeah. It really doesn't. No. It doesn't. Like, kind of what I was telling you, that just, like, put shit out. Yeah. Like, you just got to, like, this might not be the thing, or it might be It the might thing, not be, yeah. But it doesn't matter. Like, the whole point is just keep putting it out there, keep exactly. getting people, putting people on, and then, like, you you just, you never know. Like, I, I had this moment yesterday with, um, with Dakota. We're sitting down, and um, she made dinner, and, like, I had been just like tweaking at home all day, Mm -hmm. like from the start, (laughs) like I I got, I surf, like that's kind of like my workout, like your workout, like I like to surf and get home. And from like seven 30 till like she got there, I was just tweaking, like just not even getting up, like just going hard. (laughs) And then she, but I, I had like these heavy moments throughout the day where I'm just like, I'm not making money. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> right yeah on the narwhal thing no. like i'm like i'm not making money mm-hmm. like and it's that's an over exaggeration like i'm i'm making sales but like you know you got to spend money to make, make money. money it goes back to what i said earlier and so i just started like freaking out about it and then i was like really assessing like my passion for it and mm-hmm. like all this stuff and i'm just like i'm just like spilling my heart out to dakota and she just like she's like you are so scoped in she's like you are one track minded right right? and she put it so much more eloquently than i'm (laughs) saying it now but basically (laughs) she was saying like you're you're introspective on it right now and you're like plugged in and it's the only thing you can think about Mm -hmm. you need to zoom out for a second and realize you've been working on this since 2015 and i was like that's fucking real you know like yeah and it's been launched for three months man and i was just like a dagger to like the right heartstring where i was like oh 
I'm good. Like, yeah, I'm all right. exactly. Like, it's just I, like, I'm damn, right. like, you I just really... keep pushing. And like, it's just kind of like, I really did this shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know? like, yeah, I did something. Like, I, you know, I don't like, know. I'm I didn't, really, yeah, exactly. I didn't do it. But. Exactly. No, but you're like, yeah. you're on, like you created something from scratch. A brand. And that's amazing. Yeah, it like, feels good. A lot of people never even take it, even think about taking that leap. Yeah. You know, and like, I don't know. So I think that's great that she's there. It's 80% kind of, huevos, bro. What is, <laughs> bro. <laughs> 80% balls, uh, dude. Literally. I believe, 80% yeah, balls. I believe that. Like, actually, so my buddy Nick was telling me this. He said it's, no, he said 70% balls. <laughs> I like this. 70% balls, or let's be, let's not be <laughs> sexist here. <laughs> 70% bravery. 70% gumption. <laughs> yeah, gumption. There you go. <laughs> and then 20% bearing. So how do you get down? Uh-huh. Like, uh, can you talk? Yeah. Right? Are you a salesperson? Yeah, exactly. And then 10% brain. <laughs> Man. And that's real. No, that's that's yeah. so real. Like, that's it's 70% like just putting your ass on the chopping block and like hoping that they miss. And then 20% like, can you jab? You know, can you can you just drive it out with somebody and, yeah. and sell yourself? Yeah, exactly. And then ten percent like business like, yeah, acumen. Actually, <laughs> right. But you're probably learning so much, bro. Like maybe like I mean I, I'm not saying Understand it's not, it. but yeah, j- like even if it isn't, like this experience for you is so it's just so like invaluable, you know, to to the rest of your life, to other areas. I'm sure like it helps your relationships and like your friendships and all Man. this. All this different stuff, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't trade that for the world. Yeah, and eventually you'll, you'll get to the point where you're employing people. You can employ, like... That's a dream, man. You know? You know? Homies and Be able to provide that to someone. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's exactly. A, so cool. Man. It's a so, humbling so thought. Just, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know? Definitely. Just kind of bring, bringing it all back. Yeah. Um, it's like to Narwhal. Yeah. So what separates you from, like, other coffee So companies? that's that's my favorite part about this brand. Yeah. That, so, uh, yeah. It's a good, it's, good question. Johnny. It's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, so the coffee world, in my opinion, this Here is we go. me off the, Here off the cuff, we go. has gone a little bit too far, right? Like it's so nuanced and it's so particular and it's so... Um, it's so special specialized like Mm -hmm. that's what it is and it's part of the market right everything is specialized right now right you know it's the accessibility to starting your own business has created immense competition which is great way down yeah yeah which is great It, it makes for great things but the specialty coffee world in my opinion has gone like a step overboard for the common consumer like just like wine, right? Like I think the nuance of coffee and wine it's like it's amazing Mm -hmm. and it's super cool for that niche but there's a whole like common consumer that is kind of a little bit blocked out and in, in many cases intimidated, right? Like, I don't know about you, but I've been to like bodega wines like over here. Oh yeah. And what? like, come on, bro. yeah, you go in there, it's a dope spot. That but if you hour? start like chopping it up about wine, uh-huh. like you're going to feel intimidated. At least I do. Cause I'm like, I don't know. Jack me either. Shit, right. Like I'm like, and I wish that somebody would come in with the mindset and like, let's say I'm serving you and I'm like, Hey Johnny, like this is a Chardonnay and just don't really worry about it, but it's based on the type of grape they make. And this shit is bomb. Mm-hmm. This shit is fire. Yeah. This other one's pretty fire, but like this one's from France, <laughs> you know, like if someone yeah. talked to me like that, I'd be like, dope. Yeah. Like, you know, no, like, exactly. okay, cool. And then I could ask the question and I could learn a little bit more and I won't right. feel intimidated. And so it's the same thing with coffee. Like, yo, this thing is from, you know, the, the pH of this is 4.2. So the acidity on the tongue is, and you just like, you know, don't like, yeah, whoa. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> there's some places that don't even serve milk in their coffee, milk or sugar, because like, Wait, it's, what do you call it? We talk about this a bit. Yeah. Podcast, milk drinks, okay. milk drinks, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> milk drinks is like the term for it. But there's literally places that won't do that because like, it's like, that's ruining coffee. And it's like, come on, dog. I like just want re- a fucking latte. The best like, <laughs> cup of coffee that is the one in your cup, right? And that's our whole mindset. And yeah. so that's what makes us different. It's like just it. like we're trying to have specialty coffee at an affordable price for the common consumer. So don't worry about the nuance. If you're interested in it, we'll mm-hmm. chop it up and we'll talk to you about it. Like we know our stuff. Yeah. But, but we're that's, not here to try to make you feel like right. It's a community. You don't know shit. Yeah. It's a community of people that are like minded, you know, right. people that want to get outside, people that want to surf, they want to hike, they want to mountain bike, whatever their thing is outside. That's mm-hmm. what we're about. 
I love that, bro. Yeah. Although I had. So we plant a tree for every product sold on our website. Say it again, one more time. We plant a tree for every product sold. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you? Is it just beans right now? The cold brew's coming, right? Cold brew's coming. Um, we're trying to do like it's it's really expensive to ship the cold brew, so. Man, how do you like? figure that out like that's there's um, just so much to know there's like, just so yeah there's a lot to i mean i will say like you said barriers to entry are a lot lower so mm -hmm. you can educate yourself pretty quickly on yeah. google and youtube and stuff right um but yeah there's just, there's just so many like little nuanced things you don't think about so i'm thinking like i'll just do a cold brew delivery service but i didn't want to do aluminum cans i think it messes mm. up the flavor of the cold brew and then at the same time like um i just wanted glass like yeah. i really wanted a glass bottle so, um, like a 12 pack, for example, comes out to like 16 pounds, which is not bad. Like when you're handling it at a retail location, but when yeah, you're when shipping you're it, shipping it that's a fuck ton of and then you try and keep that cold on shipping, mm -hmm. we're talking like 40 bucks to go from here to like New York. Yeah. That, that's, that's not efficient. It's, it's just not, it's yeah. not it's like, like almost more than the coffee, huh? It, it actually would be for a 12 pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that it's a little bit of a bummer. I'm exploring potentially adding like a Tetra pack, which is like, you know, almond milk when it comes in the carton. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking about putting cold brew in that and then shipping it. That's a little bit more efficient. What's a lot more efficient, yeah. a lot more cost yeah, effective. Sure. <laughs> um, but, but that's a whole new like level of, of packaging, like bottling machines, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Um, so long story short is we're trying to go direct to the retailers on the on the cold brew side Got and it. then online you can buy our merch or our our uh, small batch roasted coffee yes sir yeah yeah yes, and they're sir. all blends i'm not like i haven't introduced a single origin i would like to uh plug the reyes family real quick because i do want to introduce theirs as the first it'll actually be a single estate mm. so single origin is when it's from like one region of the world right single estate is one farm from one region so it would just be the Reyes family's. Oh, coffee. that's sick. Yeah. And so I would like to introduce that as like one of my first like real like specialty specialties um, and do a couple of those. But for now, like it's, I'm trying to keep it real simple, light, medium and dark roast blends. I love the light. Yeah. Give me that light roast. It gets you juiced. Yeah. It gets you juiced. Yeah. Cause there's more caffeine in that, right? Then. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. That's a new, that's a common misconception actually. Wait, what? People don't, a lot of people don't know that light roast has more caffeine than dark roast. Oh, see, 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 see me. <laughs> <laughs> You're woke, bro. <laughs> Fucking woke. But yeah, so so what's like the angle? Like, what? Where would you be? Like, if Narwhal gets to a certain point, where would you be? Like, damn, like, dude, I'm jumping. Like, I think Narwhal is dope, but like, it's definitely. I want to build this thing up to open the door to other concepts. So I I like never want to like. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I never want to sell Narwhal. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say never, but. I, that's not my intention with right. it, but, uh, yeah, I, I want to, so, I mean, I do, I want, I have restaurant concepts, bakeries, like, yeah, like it's cooking. I love that. Yeah. We, yeah. And, and like some of them we already have logos for like, it's, uh, yeah. So like the, dude, I almost want to plug the name of the bakery that we want to do, but I'm not gonna yet. Please um, yeah, give us one. I'm not, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but that that will be hopefully coming soon. So the the idea is to keep Narwhal exclusively e-commerce and retail, and then open up, kind of like I was explaining to you and Chris earlier. Um, Khalil. Uh, oh, Chris. Chris. Oh, my yeah. Bad. yeah. So open up a, a coffee shop, and not have it be Narwhal actually, which a lot of people are like, "What the fuck are you yeah. talking about?" But the reason I want to do that is because, like, I just have so many brands I want to create, so many, like, concepts I want to put to market. Mm -hmm. So I'll just have Narwhal provide the coffee. Doesn't that ever overwhelm you, though? No. Like, how much you want to do? No. Oh, man. It can't. It can't. That's amazing. Like, that's it doesn't amazing. overwhelm me. I mean, I, so, I don't know. Because that's what used to happen to me a lot, at least. Like, there's be so much shit I want to do and get done, and then I'm like, uh, you know, I, I definitely get frozen. I think I'd exactly. be ignorant to like not admit, yeah. or I'd be foolish to not admit that it definitely, yeah, yeah, it, it can get overwhelming. But I think, um, like I personally need to have like a lot of different stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Like it's just that's how I jive. Right. Like I need to switch it up. So like no, I'm definitely, you know definitely, what I mean. Definitely. So like I can switch my brain over. Like fuck, I'm getting really annoyed by narwhal. I'm gonna look at this idea over here mm -hmm. almost slipped no. 
I like this. How do you balance Narwhal with your day job? Um, like what's yeah? What's, that's got to be a lot. It is, yeah. Especially <laughs> cause I'm in business development for my day job. Uh huh. So like I'm straight like cold calling, cold emailing, cold LinkedIn, all of it. That'll, <laughs> right. That'll Scheduling wear on a man. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm just grinding, dude. Like full on grinding. I mean, I believe like. I believe in in the side hustle now like fully because like for so long what was stopping me from starting narwhal was that i had a day job that's what was stopping you. yeah so what sparked it to be like fuck it i'm just gonna go do it just so many things mm -hmm. but really just like i felt the opportunity slipping from my hands you know what i mean because mm. it had been so long that i had been marinating on this i had right. so many things in place it was just like if i don't do this i'll never do it there's yeah. no better time. But I feel like there's a lot of people that have that, that face that kind of situation mm -hmm. and then they, they go the other way. They're just like, I think that's what most people probably do. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. so I, like. I, I don't know. I, I, I wish I could give you like one single thing, but I don't really think it was there. Yeah. I, you know, I used to talk a lot of shit about Gary V. Like I used to talk a lot of shit about Gary, Gary V. <laughs> but, um, I still talk shit about Gary V. <laughs> 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 I respect the shit out of that guy. And uh, the reason I used to talk shit is because he talks about the same thing mm -hmm. every single time he talks. But I realized it's because like, he's just speaking his truth, like what he knows. Yeah. You know? And so like, um, not saying like I, Gary V definitely wasn't the motivation for me, like taking the leap, mm -hmm. but the sentiment that he talks about is very, I very much resonate with. And it wasn't until after I launched Narwhal that I started listening to Gary Vee. And like, it's almost just reassuring my grind, you know? Um, but I do like, I genuinely feel that finally, like I can see myself leaving my day job, which like, I, I like my day job, but like for the first time in my life, like I can feel the momentum starting to be mm -hmm. like, Oh, like there's, this is going to take up a lot more time here soon. If I get a retail account, yeah. you can't be slipping yeah, on that. You no. know, like Johnny Novo's organic market. Like Bro, I better be on point. Coming I soon. better be on point, you know, <laughs> yeah, cause you exactly. lose that. That yeah. could be whatever, $12,000 a year or something, depending yeah. on how much you're selling. Right. So I can, for the first time ever, like the past couple of weeks, I'm like, Oh, I see what happens here. Right. So I believe Dang, in the man. side hustle. That's amazing. I believe in this. Uh, Dude, you know I what else that. I started doing? Uh-oh. Yeah. Is, <laughs> I freaked Dakota out <laughs> because I, uh, so in the past two weeks, I've made 160 bucks flipping things. Like what? Flipping what? Like watches, <laughs> like little, like just junk around the so house. You got a side, side hustle. Yeah. <laughs> I was going by the thrift shop to like, um, drop off some like old clothes and whatnot. Uh -huh. And then, uh, I see this like citizen watch and at my day job, we, we move their shipments for them. And I'm like, it's like five bucks, right? In the case, cop that, put it on offer up for 15 bucks. And I'm like, Oh okay, shit. Okay. My question, is that worth the 10 bucks? What? Just a I just like a million times worth the 10 bucks, bro. This is what I did. I bought it at a thrift shop for $5. Then you just posted I it. took a picture of it in the app. Never even closed the app. Took a picture of it. Citizen watch title, citizen watch, good condition, slightly used post. Yeah. That's worth the 10 bucks. For bro. Sure. Hear me out. <laughs> Two hours later, someone bought it through offer up. Offer up sent me a shipping label. I printed it out, put it on an envelope, took it to the post office, fifteen dollars deposit in my bank account. Yeah, that's worth it. No question. The, the side side hustle. No is question. Crazy. And I took that fifteen dollars and it goes straight to the narwhal account. You yeah, know, reinvest that shit. Hundred percent. Damn. Make that money work. <laughs> <laughs> now you sound like Gary V's ass. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> bro. Um, but actually, though, like not to go on a tangent, but that's the shit. Yeah, that no. is like the real stuff. Uh oh, I just messed with my flow here. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, they're a little tricky, but um, but yeah, man, we gotta start winding down a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. I think it's been a been a minute, but um, last question. Damn, how long has it been? Man, I think it's fifty five minutes. That's that that's shit flew. I did. <laughs> wow. Right, la last question for yeah. you. How do you like? 
so what what else do you do outside of your day job and narwhal like you got to have some surfing you said right mm-hmm. is that like does that kind of like calm you down and hundred because you got to have some kind of some kind of thing that just takes i swear the, to you i would you know a hundred percent first of all hundred percent you need something but if i didn't have surfing um i definitely would not be a happy person no for real like that, and that's another thing that kind of gets me emotional because like surfing has, yeah, I've had so many of those moments where I'm just like so stoked to be out there and like mm-hmm. be alive and like feel everything, like smell the air, you know, like yeah. it's just surfing takes you traveling places. Like it just does so much for you. So that's definitely like number one. Um, and outside of that, I really just like kind of just the normal stuff. Like I try and yoga when I can. So mm-hmm. Dakota teaches yoga. She's a certified yoga instructor. Oh, that's so she just started like her own um, little business. So I try and yoga as much as I can. Power couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well of a life. She's dope. Um, yeah. But so I do that. Uh, read. Mm-hmm. I like to read. Um, nonfiction though. Nonfiction. Though. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Um, that's a good like little escape. And then the other thing I like to do, and um, I've actually got a big trip coming up, but uh, obviously travel. Okay. But where are you going? Um, so the big trip I have coming up is in August, um, Dakota, my buddy Kyle and I are doing the high Sierra trail, which is, yeah, it's in the Sierras and it's, um, we're at, so Dakota is, is not necessarily convinced on this yet, but she will be. So we're, we're hiking there and back on it. And it's a five How day, long? five day, Wait, five day, one way, five day, both ways. Five day, one five way. Day, one way. Ten day. So what's the ten well, day? So we want to do it in eight, and that's the, oh, <laughs> that's the kicker. Sick. You're sick. <laughs> it's like seventeen miles a day. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So that's like the other thing I like to do. I like to like I like to get out. Th- I like to backpack. Yeah. And like hike and, um, like not on some cliche like I'm going to Malibu to go do like a one mile loop, like you know like I like to like push myself. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Cause that, but like the seventeen miles, like that's rewarding, you know. That's the thing. That's like, the you grow from that. Taking the life. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I like, to, I mean, I, I like to do a one mile loop in Malibu too, yeah. but like, nah, you know? But like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, bro. But like, I think something about you that I love, you're just so yeah. mindful. Like, mindful of your space, like, mindful of your experiences. And like, wow. that's, a, that's a beautiful thing that a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of more people, a lot of people need to incorporate, you know? Because it's always so like, go, 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 go. Or, mm. or like, I'm going to be scrolling that popular page like yeah. dude, you're just so mindful like wherever you're at i appreciate like, like that we, we got lunch the other day and even then bro it's like you're there you know like you're not yeah. on your phone and i really like appreciate here. that no, I, yeah, it's something i'm working on it's too. a great quality man it's I like re- it's refreshing that. to see you know no that means a lot like so, for real yeah. because I, i've that's something i've really been trying to work on um i was actually just talking to my buddy eddie today about that so yeah no that's, it's, that's, it's a beautiful yeah. quality but um that's but love yeah any any final thoughts um, no, not really. Just be happy, man. Just do, be happy. Do what you got to do. You man, know, I do what that. you got to do. That's, that's the angle. Yeah. Nick Monica, the mustache menace. Uh, Thank you for coming. Yeah, my guy. 100%, dude. Been a pleasure. That was dope. Thank Talk you. Talk soon. Yeah. Thanks.